donation and protest. So how will this broadcast affect her fate? Hello, I'm Felicity Bar. You're watching Al Jazeera live from London. Also coming up... An Iranian woman who had been sentenced to death by stoning has purportedly confessed to adultery and involvement in her husband's murder. Sakane Mohammadi Ashtiani made the omissions during an interview on state television. But her lawyers say the so-called confession was made under duress and she was tortured until she agreed to appear on camera. Anna Fisher reports. Primetime TV in Iran, the alleged confession of a woman whose fate has drawn international protests. In this interview, shown on Wednesday on one of the country's main TV channels, Sakini Mohammadi Ashtiani appears to admit conspiring to murder her husband in 2005. I was contacted by a man in 2005. He deceived me with his words and said, let us kill your husband. He deceived me with his words, saying that I will do everything for you. He was my husband's cousin. He kept saying that my husband had done such and such. When I entered prison, I realized that he was a convicted person and had three criminal records. He said, let us kill your husband, but I didn't believe it and thought he was kidding. I thought he had gone crazy, but afterwards realized his job was murder. Al Jazeera cannot verify the translation from the woman's Azeri Turkish into Farsi broadcast on TV. Her face is obscured, protected by an Iranian law which allows convicted people the right not to reveal their identity. She was convicted of adultery in 2006, sentenced to death by stoning. This provoked protests around the world as supporters and human rights groups demanded the sentence be withdrawn. The 43-year-old mother of two says she was forced to confess to charges of adultery. Last month, the stoning sentence was put on hold for the moment. But now she faces charges of playing a part in her husband's murder. Here is the murder procedure. She has given an injection to her husband to make him unconscious. She made her husband unconscious, then the murderer came and killed him by sticking an electric plug into the neck. Her case was highlighted by lawyer Mohammed Mustafi, who has since gone to Norway and applied for asylum there, believing he was in danger in Iran. In the interview, his client criticized him for making her case public. The human rights group Amnesty has condemned the TV performance. What is striking about the interview, it seems to me, is that here is a woman who's in the, the care, as it were, the custody of the, of the judiciary of Iran, and yet at the same time as her case is being considered by the highest court in the land, she's taken to TV, made to make this interview, where she's led into implicating herself. One of the women's lawyers claims she was tortured for two days to force her into the confession. Human rights campaigners believe this is the Iranian authorities making it clear they believe the woman has been involved in murder and should not be treated as a special case. They also fear it may signal her execution is imminent. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera. Is the Iranian blogger Potkin Azameh. Potkin, her lawyer has certainly been successful in gaining maximum publicity for her in the West. Is there a danger, though, that it has actually backfired? Because the Iranian authorities, of course, never like any outside pressure or influence. Well, can I just say that, is, that the lawyer hasn't created the publicity. The lawyer has just answered questions about his clients, which is what a good lawyer should do. The people that are actually creating the publicity is the Iranian government itself. I mean, this story hit the headlines uh, and, and, and the front pages of the, uh, of the tabloids, and it was about to fizzle out. And then the Iranian government itself started by perpetuating the news, by arresting uh, the, the, the lawyer, uh, by uh, taking his wife and his, his brother-in-law and his father-in-law as hostages, and now bringing this poor woman on TV to make confessions against herself and the lawyer. And it's the Iranian government itself that is it's, uh, it's extending the publicity and, and, and extending the, the news on, on, this, uh, on, on this saga. Why would they do that, though? Because they're aware that stoning I guess also in Iran, but certainly in the rest of the world, it is, is such a controversial issue. I don't think they see that as the problem. Their, their intention is not to give an inch. They don't want to give any concessions. They don't want to be appear to be giving any concessions. And by trying to do that and not realising that, what the, what the problem is that is that the world in this day and age, in the 21st century, has a problem with stoning a human being to death. They don't understand that. And by not understanding that, they themselves are just, just adding to the publicity to this and, and bringing bad publicity for themselves, really. Why is stoning still a part of the, the legal process 
within Iran? Who is ensuring that it stays there? Because presumably there are those in authority who don't believe it should be a part of the judicial system. Well, it was never uh, part of the penal code before 1979 revolution. It was with the advent of the Islamic revolution that it became part of the penal code. This is not a cultural thing or anything. This was something that was imposed uh, uh, in, in 1979. Uh, but even so, after three decades, the officials in the Islamic Republic do realise, some of them do realise that this is giving bad publicity. The parliament has actually voted to, to abolish the stoning from the penal code. And the, the bill has now gone to the, the Guardian Council for, uh, for, for review. And it's waiting for the Guardian Council to, to veto the, 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 the parliamentary bill. So we just have to wait to see. Hopefully, with all this bad publicity, they will realise that this is not good for the country. In fact, what the lawyer was telling me was that they're accusing him of acting against uh, national security. And he was saying it's these officials that still want to continue with a barbaric punishment, like stoning, that they're the ones who are uh, threatening the security of the country. Well, I do find it interesting that President Ahmadinejad himself actually hasn't spoken out publicly at all about the issue of stoning. I was trying to find anything that he may have said over the past couple of years. He doesn't comment on it at all, does he? He doesn't, he doesn't comment about anything like that. He doesn't comment mm. about the political prisoners that are on a hunger strike at the moment. He doesn't uh, uh, comment on uh, the economic hardships that the Iranian people are having at the moment. Basically, he just wants to comment about his achievements, that no one knows exactly what these achievements are, and just wants to go on about like, condemning Israel and denying Holocaust and just embarrassing the Iranian people further in the international arena. That's all he talks, ever talks about. Potkin, going to have to leave it there. Potkin Azamer, thanks very much Thank indeed much. for joining us.